us. Lord, I pray that you would help our church, Lord, and help our pastor, help Miss Valerie, help their family. Lord, give them um, healing. Give them good answers from the doctors. Lord, I pray you'd be with them. And I pray that tonight, Lord, that as we look into your word, that you would speak to us. Lord, help us to be encouraged by the message tonight. Lord, help us to, to think about the, the words and think about what it is that you're saying through this text. And Lord, I do pray that you would help us as we, as we continue tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. So we, we look at this, this uh, passage in Philippians 2, and it's only a, a few short verses, but there's a lot in there. And uh, the title of the message tonight is, Are You Ready to Be Sent? Are You Ready to Be Sent? I remember back when I was in my police officer days, and I remember before I was, uh, you know, having an insurance business and before I was really right with God, and uh, I know I have sometimes a lot of police officer illustrations, and I try not to, but some of them fit pretty well, so it's, it's hard not to. But um, there was a, the dispatch center works, uh, it's a big, you know, building where they have dispatchers, they have screens, they have uh, maps, and they show where all the vehicles are. They show where all the different uh, squad cars are, and each officer, each car can mark themselves as in service, out of service, busy, on lunch, on break, and, and you can see exactly who's available on the screens as a dispatcher. And the, the word in this text, in verse 19, the word send means literally to dispatch. It means to, to, to send out, to dispatch. And, and I was thinking about that because there is a general call of service to the Christian. There, there is a general call that, that applies to all of us. That all of us are called to be soul winners. All of us are called to, to, to disciple others, to teach them, to serve. We're all called to, to serve God. But then there's also a specific call. Then there's also a call that God has specific to your life. Something that he wants you to do with your life. That there's a call that, that, that so few maybe don't even hear because they're not ready to hear the call. And, and, I, and, as, I, and as I was thinking about this, I thought about the units and the police cars and how there would be a... Some cars that were available and able to be sent, but then there were other cars that were not. Some, some people were tied up. Some people were, were you know, genuinely on something. Others just didn't want to go to calls, so they would just mark themselves as out and be on lunch for two and a half hours, you know? But, um, but the question I want to ask you tonight is, are you ready to be sent? You see, the Christian should desire to be used by God. The Christian should have a desire that, that God would, would use him and, and send him into the gospel ministry. The question shouldn't be, or the statement shouldn't be, Lord, don't send me. Lord, please keep me, just don't send me out there. Don't send me anywhere. Instead, the question should be, Lord, do you want me to go? Do, is there somewhere you want me to be? Where, did, where is it that you want me to be with my family? How best do you want me to serve you? The church is, is, is not meant for just gathering as many people as possible and keeping everybody in. It's meant to send people out into the highways, into the hedges, into the community to, to reach others with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And God has a desire to use people. There is an opportunity today for the gospel. But the, but the question is, is are you ready to be sent? You see, in this passage, as we look at it, Paul was hoping to send Timothy. He was hoping to send Timothy to Philippi. And as you look at it, you can see that Paul couldn't just send anybody. That there was, that there was some reasons why, he, why Timothy was ready and prepared to be sent into, the, and, into this next step. But I want to ask you the question today, are you ready to be sent? If we're going to be ready to be sent as people of God, then we have to live today so we will be ready to be sent tomorrow. The question that we're going to answer is how do we prepare to be sent? How do we prepare for that? Well, we can learn how we ought to be prepared for God to send us by looking at how Timothy was prepared to be sent to Philippi. So number one, we, we are to care for the state of others. In verse number 19 and 20, it says that, But I trust in the Lord Jesus to send Timotheus shortly unto you, that I also may be of good comfort when I know your state. For I have no man like-minded who will naturally care for your state. Now this isn't talking about the material state or the physical state. This is talking about the spiritual state. And as Christians, you and I are to care for the spiritual state of others. You, you and I should, should have a desire to see others come to Christ and to see other people grow in, in Christ and to be discipled. And, and Timothy was somebody that cared for the spiritual state of the church at Philippi. You see, the, the Great Commission doesn't stop for us at salvation. If it did, it would be really easy, right? We go knock on the door, somebody gets saved, 
and that's the end of it. And there's nothing, there's, there's nothing past that. But actually, it continues to teach them all things. We're not supposed to, to, to leave them as just a newborn babe in Christ, but to do all that we can to help them grow and to help them teach them all things. And Paul was looking for somebody that he could send to Philippi that would care for the spiritual state of those Christians, that would care for the spiritual state of the church. And if we're going to, to be ready to be sent by God into the world, in, into the community, to, to be sent for the gospel work, we have to care for the spiritual state of others. We should care that, that those around us and those that God has given us influence in their lives, that we are doing all we can to help them grow, to help them to, to, to know Christ and to grow in Christ. I think about the, the, the parents of a newborn baby. If uh, so, some, of, uh, some of you in here have just had a child or, or recently had a kid, or a lot of people do have kids in here, but I couldn't imagine, because I don't have kids yet, but I couldn't imagine having a newborn baby and then just saying, great, we have a baby, and then walking away. And then just, that's the end of it. And you, 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 know, you leave the baby, and you say, that's, we did our job, and that's the end of it. And that, that would be horrible, right? I mean, you have no idea what would happen to the child. But that's not, that's not the, what we're supposed to do as parents. That's not what God's uh, order is for us. God doesn't want us to just be saved and be newborn babes in Christ and then to never grow, to never have anyone that comes alongside and teaches us and helps us. And I got to tell you, as I stand here today, I am thankful for those that have invested into me. I'm thankful for those people that have cared enough about me to help me grow, to, to invest in my life, to, to, to be there for me, and when I didn't deserve it, to, to watch over me, to guide me, to help me make difficult decisions. And if we're going to be ready to be sent, we have to care for the state of others. You see, it's going to take a little bit more than just the generic and simple uh, text message. It's going to take some sacrifice. It's going to take some, some reaching out, some going, some, some uh, time, some effort. It's going to be difficult. But we should be seeking to create disciples of Christ. We should be seeking to help others grow. And, 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 and if we're going to do that, it's going to take our sacrifice. It's going to take time. Are you discipling the people that God has given you in your life? That's a question that I had to ask myself as I studied this. How, how well are we doing in the young adult group of discipling those that God has given us influence over? How well are you doing in your Sunday school class, in your, in your, um, in your group settings, in your families, in your friends, of caring for the state of others? Do you know the spiritual state of others in your group? Do you know, is, is everybody in your class saved? Is, is that, does everybody know the Lord Jesus? I sure hope so. I sure hope that everyone in your class has been presented with the gospel, that you've done what you can to reach them. Is everybody in your class growing? Are you reaching out? Are you trying to get them into discipleship? You see, we ought to care for the spiritual state of others. And, and what Paul is saying is that Timothy was somebody who cared for the state of others. It wasn't just, it wasn't just a, a, a chore to him. It says that he naturally cared, which that word means genuinely. Uh, Timothy genuinely cared for the spiritual state of other people. You see, we, 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 can't, we can't fake it because people know. People know if you really care. I think uh, pastor says it all the time. They don't care how much you know until they know how much you care, right? And that's true because when we really care for somebody, when we, when we really invest into their life, they know that and we can help them and, and they'll listen. They'll, they'll let us uh, guide them. I, I think about some people in my own life when I was growing up that, that gave time and that gave effort and that that prayed for me, that came the extra mile, that would answer my calls in the middle of the night. And it's going to take that from you and me. If we're going to help people grow, if we're going to be the, the, the disciples of Christ that he wants us to be, if we're going to be ready to be sent into his work, then we have to care for the state of others. Don't look at the, the people that God has given you in your life to influence as a burden. Look at them as a blessing. Look at them as an opportunity for you to care and to make a difference in somebody's life. But Timothy cared for the state of others, and we ought to as well. It, it is, it's a huge responsibility for you and I to have a, a, a class that we teach on the Bible, that for you and I to have an influence that we have, to, to teach a bus class, to teach a kid's class. It's a huge responsibility because now those people have been entrusted into our care, and we ought to do all that we can to reach them. So we ought to care for the state of others. But then secondly, we ought to constantly seek the Lord. So look down in verse number 21. It says that for all seek their own, not the things which are Jesus Christ. And Paul's statement is true today, that, that most, that all, that his, his statement is that everybody else seeks their own, 
but not the things that are Jesus Christ, but not Timothy. Timothy was different. Timothy sought the Lord. He, we have to constantly seek the Lord. The Bible says in Matthew uh, chapter 6, verse 33, to seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Jesus wants our eyes to be fixated on him, and then he will provide and lead us to where he wants us to go. But we have to have our eyes fixed on him. We, we have to constantly seek the Lord. It's so easy to get, uh, to get distracted. The devil is a master at distracting Christians from God's will in their life. He's, he, he's, he's, a, he's professional at it. He, he does his whole job of trying to distract people and get them off of the course that God wants for their life. But we, are, we have to constantly seek the things that belong to Jesus Christ. Seek his things. I remember back when, uh, three and a half years ago, when Shelly and I, we were, we were uh, just started coming to church, maybe it was four years ago, um, but we were trying to get our lives right. And we had realized that we had wasted all of our adulthood so far and for ourselves. And we had realized that we're going to get to the end of our life and have nothing that we've done for the cause of Christ. It was going to be a complete waste of, of, of all that God had done for us. And I remember, as, as real as I'm standing here, praying on, in our living room, praying. We used to pray uh, every night. We were reading through Matthew at the time. But I would pray, and for the first time in my life, it was, it was true when I, was a, when I told God I was a blank check. For the first time in my life, I meant it from my heart that, God, I will go and do whatever it is that you want me to do. You see, I had said that before, but I didn't really mean it. And at this, at this point in my life, it was, it was real, it was true. And I said, God, if you show me where to go, if you show me what's next, I will take that step. But you show me what's next, whatever that is. I was unhappy at my job, I was dissatisfied with, with working at State Farm, and, I, and I, I, I wanted to do something with my life for the cause of Christ. And we prayed that prayer, and God answered it. And what, what I'm here to tell you is that you and I have to continuously, not just once, but continuously seek the things that are Jesus Christ. We have to continuously seek him first above all else so that he can use us and he can guide us and he can lead us. You see, so often we are so concerned about what, is it, what it is that matters to us. We, 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 we put ourselves at the top of the priority list all the time. And I know because I do it. I, I wake up and, and I have to remind myself, it's not about me. It's not about what I want to do with my life. It's about what Christ wants to do with my life. And it should be the same for you. You see, we, we, we are to constantly seek the Lord. And if you, if you ask yourself, is Christ really the Lord of your life? Is he really the one who's calling the shots in your life? Does he run your schedule? Do you allow him to determine what it is that you do throughout your week? Do you allow him to, to, to make decisions for you in your life by heeding to his word? Is he truly preeminent in your life? You see, the Bible uses terms for, this, for the, the person who's saved as bought. It uses terms as purchased, that you and I have been purchased with his blood, that, that our life is not our own, that we have been literally bought by Christ. I mean, think about that. He, he died on the cross for you and me and purchased and bought us. That ought to mean something. That ought, to, that ought to mean something to you and me because he, he, he has literally bought us to use us. So the question when we wake up and we go throughout our day shouldn't be, Lord, what is it that I want to do with my life? But Lord, what is it that you want to do with my life? Where, where is it that you want to guide me? Where do you want me to be? How could I be of best use for your kingdom? What is it that you want me to do, Lord? The, 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 the idea is that if we constantly seek the Lord, He'll lead us into where he wants us to be. Timothy didn't seek the things for himself. He sought the things which are Jesus Christ. So you ask yourself, what things does Jesus care about? What are the things that, that, that are Jesus Christ? What is it that he, that he cares for? Well, he cares for the souls of men. Amen. He cares for the spiritual growth of his people. He cares for the church. He cares, he cares, first and foremost, for the souls of men. Jesus cares when that sinner dies and goes to hell without him. Jesus cares when the, the Christian lives next to a bunch of lost people that he intended for them to witness to, but they never did. Jesus cares when the, when the Christian who's been in church all of his life goes and backslides and runs into the world and causes and brings disaster into their own life. Jesus cares for the person that is sick and hurting and nobody's there to help them. 
Jesus cares for the church. He cares when false prophets and false doctrine creeps into the church and deceives the simple. He cares for these things. Do you? Do you care for these things? What is, what is on the top of your priority list? What is it that you, that, you, that you think of? What is it that you're consumed with? What is the ultimate goal of your life? Ask, ask yourself the, that question. What is it that you're ultimately seeking? You see, to, to seek the things that are Jesus Christ means to be concerned for the things that he's concerned for. Jesus cared enough to go to the woman at the well. He cared enough to save me when I was a 13-year-old boy and to deliver me from a lifestyle of sin. And I often have to ask myself, do I care enough about the things that he cares for? You see, I use the, I, I use the word uh, constantly seek the Lord because it's not a one-time thing. It's not a one-time decision that you make four years ago and then go to Bible college. It's a daily thing. The, the problem with us being a living sacrifice is that we get off of the altar, right? It's a daily thing that we have to continuously re-offer our life to Christ and re-offer ourselves to him. If you want to be prepared for God to send you, you must seek his things above your own. And I promise you, and as we continue to study, go through the message tonight, I promise you that God is still calling people. I promise you that there is opportunity in this world. I promise you that there is, is, is people that need the gospel. Here and outside of our country and within our country, I promise you that there is opportunity, and I promise you God wants to use you. But take the notes from Timothy of how he was prepared to answer that call. He, he constantly sought the Lord. And then third, we, we continuously serve in the gospel. So take a look at verse number 22. The Bible says, But ye know the proof of him, that as a son with the father, he hath served with me in the gospel. So Paul says that Timothy has proved. The, the word proving means a, a, a testing. A testing. God often tests us before he uses us. We see that with, with Abraham. That God tested Abraham's devotion to him. Tested his faith. And God does the same thing with you and I. That before he sometimes will lead us to the next step or he'll bring us to the next thing, there'll be a time of testing and a time of, of proving, a time of where he expects us to be faithful. You know, I, I, uh, I knew going into Bible college, just graduated from it, and I knew going into it that um, it was going to be a time of testing. Like I knew from he hearing the stories from a pastor and from Shelly's grandpa that I knew it was going to be difficult. I knew there was going to be tries, trials of faith. I knew there was going to be trials with us. I knew it was going to be hard. And, and I'll tell you, there was a lot of moments where it was hard. There was a lot of moments where we were wiped out, exhausted, and it was difficult. But I, I, going into it, I knew that if I can't get through this, there's no way I'm going to make it through the ministry. There's no way I'm going to make it through a life of, of serving the Lord. And, and God often does prove us before he uses us. And see, the, the key to this is not to try to figure out the answer within the test. It's not trying to, to do it in your own strength or figure out how you can muscle your way through it. The key to the test is to be faithful and just rely on God. Just to rely on him. Just to rely on his strength, rely on his provision. Faithfulness is the key. God will use the things in your life and the trials in your life and the difficulties in your life to prepare you for what's ahead. To prepare you for the next thing that he wants you to do. Sometimes we, 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 uh, um, it's hard for us because we get busy and, we, and things are difficult. But I want to encourage you tonight, don't quit your ministry. Don't quit the things that are difficult. The, I remember when I first uh, came here and I got thrown into the bus ministry. Man, I had no idea what I was getting into. I'll be honest with you. I, 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 I kind of showed up one night and uh, uh, I think it was Josh O'Hare. I don't know if he's in here. But he just kind of threw me into it with Ryan Rockefeller. And, and uh, I had never been a part of anything like that. It was crazy. But I got to tell you, out of all the ministries that I've been blessed to be able to be a part of here, that is one of the most rewarding ones. I mean, it, it is a difficult one, and there's times where it's just chaos, and, you know, it's, it's, you're trying just to get through. But it's a rewarding ministry. I got to tell you, it's a rewarding ministry. When you see those kids that, that really would have probably no other hope, but they come to Christ and they come to salvation, and, and they come to be saved, I mean, you think about the, you look at, you go visit them in their homes, you see they don't have parents, they don't have really any rules, they don't have any structure, and then they come here for an hour and they can be loved on by the, by the church and they can be presented with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Like, man, that's a tough ministry, but it's one of the most rewarding. And, and what, other, what other ministry do we have that brings as many children here as the bus ministry on a weekly basis? I mean, I can't think of much else. And, I, and we're just getting started on it. We, we, have, we have the capability to run even more buses 
We could fill this place every Wednesday with, with kids and get them under the sound of the, of the gospel. And I, I just want to encourage you, don't quit the ministries that you're in. Don't quit the times of uh, that, the, the things that God has allowed you to serve in and the times of testing. It may be exactly where God wants you to be. But sometimes God may just be growing you and trying to, to use you to w minister to others and then grow you and use you for the next thing. You see, notice in, a, in the same verse that Paul said that Timothy served. So it says, but ye know the proof of him that as a son with the father, he hath served with me in the gospel. It's, we, have to, we, we can't escape the, the fact that the ministry is work, that the ministry is going to take work from us. It's not, it's not exactly, it, you know, to minister is to serve. It's to be a worker. It's to go and to serve other people. It's not, it's not always going to be easy. Jesus says that he who will be great among you, let him be your servant. If the Son of God comes and washes the feet of the disciples. I mean, just think about this. The, the, the creator of the universe who created everything and you and me and everything in it, if he comes down to earth and is able, number one, to condescend to man, to take on flesh, and then to wash the feet of the disciples, is there anything that you and me would say is beneath us? Is there anything that we could say really that, man, we really shouldn't be, we really shouldn't be doing that? Not for serving Christ, right? He, he, he owed, we owe him everything. We owe him our, our whole life. And Timothy was an example of someone who was faithful. He was, he was faithful in the times of proving, but then also he served with the, in the gospel. He was a worker. He was a servant. I want to encourage you that sometimes you have to be in the Lord's work and stay faithful during the difficult times, but stay in that. Stay where you're at and continue to work through it. Continue to let God grow you. Where are you in your ministries tonight? Where, what, what is it that you're doing in your own, um, in your walk with the Lord? What is it that you're serving in? Is there anywhere else that you can plug in at? You know, we, we do soul winning every night on Tuesday, uh, Tuesday nights at 6. And anytime that somebody comes, we tell them, hey, you don't have to speak tonight. We, if you don't know how to soul win, that's perfectly fine. Just come and walk with us. Just come and, and fellowship with us and pray with us. And, and the reason that we do that is so we can help people understand that we're here to help each other. You know, Timothy served with Paul in the gospel. Paul was like his spiritual father. Take somebody under your wing. Take somebody under your wing wherever you're at and show them the way. If you're a bus teacher and you want to train um, other bus teachers, show them the way. Go, go with them. Show them how to do it. It's the same thing with, with soul winning is that you come with, uh, out to soul win. You don't have to say anything. Just walk and pray and we'll just kind of show you how things work. But, but we are to be continuously serving in the gospel. I, I just want to bring this to light because don't put it off this week and think, well, what could I do in the following weeks? Think about it even right now. Think about the ministries that you're in. How better could you serve in those ministries? Because trust me, I, you know, we're a very busy church and we have a lot going on. And I know that everyone's got a lot to, to handle, a lot to juggle on your plate. Um, but this is awesome stuff to be in the ministry of the Lord. This is, a, this is a great work for God, and this is a great privilege to get to serve him. So I just want to encourage you to think about where is it that God has allowed you to serve? What is it that you're in? What ministries are you involved in? And how best can you be used in his service? What more can you do? Who can you pour into? But we need to continuously serve in the gospel. And then finally, we need to completely surrender to his timing in verse 23. You see, Paul says in verse 23... Him, therefore, I hope to send presently, so soon as I shall see how it will go with me. Paul didn't know the Lord's schedule. He didn't know when it was going to be that Timothy was going to, to, was going to go to Philippi. It, it could be possible that Paul thought, maybe at some point uh, I should send Timothy sooner. And it's also possible that Timothy might have thought, well, I, I want to go sooner, or I want to go later. They didn't know when the Lord was going to send them. And to be ready to be sent into the gospel, we have to understand that we need to be completely surrendered to his timing. You see, sometimes it, we get anxious. We, get, we, we feel like we're, oh, Lord, I'm ready for the next thing. Or I've been here long enough, or I've been serving in this ministry long enough, or I've been doing this long enough. And we get anxious, and we want to jump the gun, and we want to go out and, and, and serve and do um, before he's ready for us, before he's ready for that. There was a kid that I was in uh, Bible college with, and he was talking to me the last couple months, and he said um, that he was thinking about leaving college and just going off and, and joining the ministry and, you know, just quitting the school and just jumping in the mission field. And I told him, I said, man, I don't think you should do that. You know, God led you here. Finish what you start. 
and in his time, he'll lead you to what's next. We, but don't jump the gun on, on where it is that the Lord has you. Paul and Timothy didn't know when was going to be the time that Timothy would be to go to Philippi. And if for you and me, it's the same thing. We don't know exactly what God is doing behind the scenes. We don't know exactly when it's going to be that he's going to want to send out and move and, and put you in the next thing. But what we do know is that we can trust him. We do know that we can trust his timing, that we can trust his plan. If you've ever seen a, an orchestra, a big orchestra, uh, that, an event, you see the conductor, and he's up on the, the platform, and he's controlling all of these people. And he's got you know, sections of different instruments all over the place, and he, all, these are all professional musicians, but they have to pay attention to his timing. Because you could have a saxophone player play a beautiful solo, a beautiful piece, uh, awesome just ripping it on the saxophone, but if he does it at the wrong time, it's, it's going to mess up the overall picture, right? The timing matters. The timing matters, and God is in control of that. God is in control of the timing of our life. Don't, don't, don't get anxious and, and look to, to jump the gun, but just surrender to his timing. Let him lead you. Sometimes we just have to pray and let God open up that next door. And then as we, as we pray and as we seek his peace and as we walk through that door, he, he leads us into what's next. When, when, you, when you're seeking his will, when you're seeking um, to serve him, you have to be willing to be led. You have to be willing to just follow his timing. And then and finally, Timothy had to be ready to go. He had to have nothing holding him back. Again, they didn't know when Timothy was going to go to Philippi. And you and I don't know if and when God's going to send us somewhere. It might be to a, a next door neighbor. It could be across the country. It could be across the world. We don't, we don't know. We don't know when God is going to move you to the next thing, but we want to be ready. We want to be ready to be sent. We want to be somebody that God can look down and say, that person I can send. That person is, is, is seeking me. He's caring for the state of others. I need somebody to go and to help this church or this whatever, and I can send that person because he's ready. And, and, that, and that's what we want to be. Timothy had to be ready to go. Be ready to go whenever God calls your name. Be ready to go whenever that time comes. And, and it may not be to go full-time in the mission field. It may not be that. But no matter what it is, when God calls you to something, be ready to go to that. There shouldn't be jobs and houses and lands and, and things that would hold us back. Houses can be bought somewhere else. Jobs can be gotten somewhere else. There's every, God will provide, and wherever he guides you, he will do that. But be ready to go whenever he sends you. Be ready to go whenever the time comes that he calls your name and you're called to go somewhere for him. I remember being, uh, and when I was working as police, that there would be a time you'd be eating dinner and you'd get a call and it'd be a in progress something and you'd have to drop your food and run out the door. I, can count, I can't even count how many times you had to do that. But when God calls you, just be ready to answer and be ready to answer right then. Follow his timing. Follow his leading. Follow whenever he's leading you to do something. There, there's nothing more important than, than the service of the gospel, than going out and, and being a gospel witness. Surrender to his timing completely. If God has put opportunities in front of you to serve, pray about them. Seek his will and his peace, and then walk through the doors that God gives you. Walk through those doors until he leads you elsewhere. Is there any place that you would tell God, that's off limits, that I wouldn't go there? Is there anything that you would say, God, I'll do everything else, but is there, is there any um, ministry or anything that you're holding back from him? Because in all honesty, we can't do anything in ourselves anyway. It all has to be him. He, he has to give us the grace to do all of this. So whatever it is that, that you're in, whatever it is that he's leading you to, completely surrender to his timing. Be willing to be led by him. Be willing to be led by the spirit of God. And, I, and, and as we think about this tonight, there's such great opportunity for the gospel. I mean, there really is. We live in a time, I know we say it's dark out and it's, it's a crooked and perverse nation, and it is. And there's, there's a lot of wicked men and women in this world. That right is wrong, right, wrong is right. We all understand that. But we have such an opportunity to be a light in this world. We have such an opportunity to, to say, Lord, I will go wherever it is that you want to send me. You see, God is looking for people that are not fighting to be used in the gospel ministry, but are sticking their hand up and saying, Lord, I will go. Lord, I will be used in the gospel ministry. I will, I will, I will go where you want me to be. For, for many of us, it's right here in Pinellas Park, Florida. It's right here in, in Community Bible Baptist Church. This is where God wants you to be. 
So are you, are you serving him here? Are you a witness here? Are you, are you caring for the state of others here? Are you seeking him and his things first? What, what is the focus of life here? And we see in this, in this passage with Timothy that Timothy was ready to be used by God. He was, he was not, Paul couldn't take it just anybody, but he took Timothy because of the, his manner of life. So I want to ask you tonight as we close, number one, do you want God to call on you? Do you want God to call your name? I know there's, there's often, thinking about this message, I was thinking there's probably two crowds of people. There's the one crowd that says, like, yes, I, I want God to use me. I'm waiting for God to use me. I just don't know what he's leading me to next. And then there might be another crowd that says, I'm not even sure if I want my name called. I'm not even sure if I want to be used in, the, in, in, in God to send me and to use me. If you're in that crowd, use tonight, use the altar tonight and and ask God to help you. Ask God to change your heart, to open your eyes, to see the great need in this world. There's such a great need for people that will go out and to preach the gospel to other people. There's such a great need that people would be saved. And then if you are, if you are saying, Lord, I just want you to use me. I feel like I've been in this area, in, in this ministry. Lord, I don't know what's next for me. Maybe you're a, a young adult or a teen. You're coming out of high school and you're just looking for the will of God for your life, I want to encourage you to just follow these principles that Timothy did, and God will open the next door. God will lead you. He will guide you. But be a Timothy. Be, be the person that cares for the state of others. Don't just, don't just stop at a, at, a, at a shallow level with your relationships with people. Do you know the spiritual state of those people in your life? Because Jesus cares about the spiritual state of us. The apostles cared very much about the spiritual state of, of people. The whole New Testament is, is, is much about just growing and discipling. Only a little bit of the New Testament really is about the actual salvation part of, of uh, being saved by accepting Christ. Most of it after that is all about sanctification. Most of it is about growing and, and growing in grace and growing in Christ. It's important to God, it's important to his apostles, and it should be important to us that we care about the state of others. Are you seeking him? What is it that, that is on your mind? Where is it that you're headed? What is the focus of your life? Don't, I want to encourage you, don't start with the, Lord, I'm going to do this, or this is going to be my path. Ask him, what is, it, what is it, Lord, that you want me to do? What is it, where is it that you want to guide me? Where is it that you want to use me? And then, are you surrendered to his timing? Are you serving in the gospel? Are you just content being right where you are, plugged in, doing the very best you can to be faithful to serve in ministry, to see others come to Christ? And are you content to just serve until God opens the next door? To trust in him and just to wait until the next thing comes up. As, as, we, as we think about this tonight, ask yourself, are you ready to be sent? I, I go back to the first illustration of the, the police dispatch center. If God was looking, if he was looking on the, the computer screen and looking at all the different units and trying to figure out which one could I send over here? Which one could I send to this church? Which one could I send to this place? Which one could I send to this area? Which one could, is ready? What is the state of you, of your unit? Are you available? Are you ready? Are you ready to be sent? Do you have your hand up and say, Lord, send me, use me? There is nothing greater than to serve Christ. There is nothing greater you can do with your life than to serve Christ. I, I know... I. Four years ago, I understood that for the first time in my life, that there is going to be nothing more important and nothing greater when I get to the end of my life than to know that I did the very best I could to serve God. And I, I know that there's no job, there's no amount of money, there's no house, there's no anything that's going to matter when you get to the end of your life. Use this time. Think about, think about what the, how Timothy was prepared and watch God do amazing things in your life. This, this is, this is going to be an awesome ride serving God together. It's going to be awesome to, to, to serve and to minister no, no matter where you are. But are you ready to be sent? Let's pray. Lord, I do thank you so much for this uh, evening you've given us. And I do pray, Lord, that you would help us to think about these things. And, um, Lord, just to really ask ourselves a question. Are we, are we ready to be sent? Are we ready to be sent into the, the gospel ministry? Lord, are, are, are we respondent to you? Are we available to you? Lord, I know that it's, it's such a convicting thought to think about so many of these things because it's so easy to get sidetracked. It's so easy to, to just forget, Lord, how important it really is. 
Lord, I do pray that you would do something special in our church. I pray, Lord, that you would do something in the hearts of your people. Lord, I pray that you would help us and open our eyes and help us to see the great need of the gospel, the great opportunity that is out there in the world. Lord, that there's really nothing more important than making sure that we do all we can that people, to see people saved and spend their eternity with you. Lord, I ask that you would help us. Lord, help us to, to bring us revival, Lord. We know that we need repentance and revival. I pray that you would help us to, to see us in the word of God, Lord, to, to, to see us in the mirror of your word, that we would see where we're wrong, that we would see where we need encouragement, that we'd see where we need to discontinue. Help us, Lord. Help us to, to, to care more about the state of others and the spiritual state of those around us. Lord, help us to, uh, to witness, to disciple. Lord, help us to seek you. And encourage us, Lord. I know that we're busy, but if we, we know you'll give us your strength. And we pray you'd help us to continue to serve together in the gospel. And if there's anybody here tonight that has heads are bowed and eyes are closed, if there's anybody here tonight that needs to use the altar, the altars are open. We'll go ahead and stand to our feet with our heads bowed and eyes closed. If you need the altar tonight, if you want to just come down and, and, and pray and, and, and ask God to use you maybe, you, maybe you've thought about some of the principles of Timothy and how he was ready to be sent. Come down as Brother Iris sings. have one praying. Let's go ahead and sing that chorus together as a congregation. a couple of quick announcements as we wrap the service this evening. Just a reminder that this Friday, June 7th, the Sunshiners are getting together and uh, they are going to have an ice cream social. And um, it can't be bad if there's going to be ice cream. So come and, and enjoy yourselves and have a good evening together. That'll be a good time. And then junior camp is